Commodity markets follow strong and consistent seasonal price trends. That is, there are certain times of the year when futures prices tend to go up, and there are other times of the year when futures prices tend to drop. Today, we're gonna to be talking about why these consistently strong seasonal trends exist, the different ways that you can analyze these trends, and the most consistently profitable approach for trading these trends. So, commodity markets have strong seasonals. There's a great way to trade these seasonals. Let's get into it. Hi everyone, it's Dave Whitcomb from Peak Trading Research in Geneva, Switzerland. My goal is to make you a more profitable trader with commodity market insights and real systematic trading strategies. So to get started today, let's talk about what seasonality is. Seasonality is an extremely important concept to understand to successfully trade commodity markets. At Peak Trading Research, we talk a lot about the four most important non-fundamental drivers for commodity prices. That's the macroeconomic environment, the month, seasonals, market structure and momentum. Knowing if it's a seasonally bullish month or a seasonally bearish month is a critically important part of your successful commodity trading game plan. So seasonality is important, but how should we think about how seasonality works? When commodity prices tend to rise during a certain time of the year, why is that? Seasonals tend to generally follow production trends throughout a calendar year. Traders tend to add what's called a risk premium to futures prices during critical production months and then price out that risk premium premium once production becomes more known. To take an example, for a market like U.S. soybeans, traders tend to get nervous in April and May as we're heading into those critical summer production months for soybeans. But by the time we get to June and July and August, that window where things can really go wrong starts closing and traders start to remove that price risk premium that they had added in April and May. Soybean futures prices tend to drop. Now, every year is different and every year has a different mix of fundamental and non-fundamental price drivers, but in general, taking a 10-year price trend like we do, or a 12-year or a 15-year price trend helps us to see the big picture trend in futures prices throughout the year. We provide our clients with 10-year normalized price trends for every major commodity market like we looked at for soybeans earlier. We also provide our clients with heat maps to see the multi-week seasonal trends across the whole commodity complex. And finally, we provide our clients with very specific high hit rate seasonal patterns patterns every month. For example, as one of our March 2022 seasonal price patterns, we can see that sugar number 11 futures have dropped in 15 out of 17 years for the 27 trading sessions starting March 2nd. That has been a consistently profitable bearish price trend to trade in sugar over the past 17 years. And you can also analyze seasonal trends yourself using Excel or Python or even an automated trading platform like Multicharts or TradeStation. For example, if you would use a simple script like this in TradeStation, you could test when the best time of the year is to enter a trade and also optimize to find how long you should stay in that trade. We can see using that code that TradeStation is telling us what we already knew, and that is selling in early March and covering that short in May is generally a profitable approach. For those of you who use TradeStation or Multicharts, I will paste this script below so you can play around with this for other markets. Now, now we've talked about the different ways that you can either use peak trading research analysis or your own approach to find these seasonal trends, but what's the best way to trade seasonals? How should you actually structure a trade? Based on a lot of analysis and testing that we've run, the best way to structure a seasonal trade is to take whatever bullish or bearish move you expect to see based on your 10 or 12 or 15 years of seasonal analysis. Maybe it's a 5% move or a 10% move or a 15% move, and then take half of that as your stop loss. So if you're looking to make $5,000 on a short position in sugar, take $2,500 as your stop. Now a two to one risk reward ratio may not seem that great, right? If we're using a breakout strategy, we might use a four to one or a five to one risk return ratio. But with seasonal trades, we really wanna give the trade a wide berth. We wanna give this trade a lot of room to work. These are multi-week or multi-month trades. A lot of volatility can happen 
happen in the meantime before we finally realize that eventual seasonal pattern. So again, from our experience, a two to one risk reward ratio generally makes sense to think about structuring these trades. Now we've talked about examples for soybeans and sugar, but seasonals also work for energy markets, for metal markets. They work for some interest rate markets around government funding windows. So big picture, what have we talked about today? Commodity markets have strong seasonal trends. We know that those trends exist because there are certain times of the calendar year when traders either add or remove a risk premium. There are different ways to analyze those seasonal trends, either a big picture, multi-week, multi-month view, or a more specific high hit rate window. And to structure a seasonal trade, something like a two to one risk reward ratio tends to work best. So do you trade seasonals? Are there different approaches you use to trade these patterns? Are there markets that seasonals work best? Let me know in the comments below. Peak Trading Research is a leader in seasonal analysis across all major commodity markets. If you'd like a trial of our research, you can reach out insight at peaktradingresearch.com. Thank you for your time. Good luck trading seasonals, and we'll see you soon.